All right, so in the last video, we spoke about whether or not we could arbitrage mirror protocol. And I said that I was tracking the prices and I was, I was putting those prices in a database, which I'm gonna talk more about in this video. But the first thing I wanna do is just show you what the results are from the data that I collected over the past, I think it's just under a week worth of 30 minute price data across all of the assets that are on there. So if I just show you the data set very quickly, here's an Excel spreadsheet and it's got, you know, all of the different symbols and it's got, you know, the different timestamps. And um, I mean, there, there are 9,205 rows of data. Um, and if I look over here, you've got the price, you've got the Oracle price and you've got the price difference. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, it's, it's worth going back to look at the previous video because in the previous video you know i was showing this mirror protocol here it is mirror protocol app and looking at the pool price and the oracle price right so the the question we raised in that video is can we arbitrage this you know if you look at the premium is this something that we can take advantage of is the movement between let's call it what the blockchain is pricing something as and what the stock market is pricing it at and so, you know, we go in more into depth about the theory in the prior video. So I don't want to talk about that so much here, um, but I'll link to the prior video if you haven't seen that. What I want to talk about here are the actual results. So for example, here we're looking at Apple and this is on 30 minute data. Now I will be talking about some research that was done by one of our wizards who actually emailed over to me some research, which I really appreciated. And I'm going to give them some recognition in this video for sure. Um, although I won't be saying their name because, um, you know, they'd rather remain anonymous. But, um, you know, some awesome research was sent to me as well, and it really helped with the insights here. Um, in the meantime, this is sort of the analysis I've done on the 30 minute time frame uh, intervals. So this is Apple, um, the prices here. So the pool price is this blue line. And the Oracle price, let's call it the price from the stock market, is the uh, orange line. Now, one of the things I noticed is this orange line just looks flat. And, you know, I looked at this and I thought, OK, why is that flat? You know, are the oracles not performing like they should be, etc.? And I realized, no, it was just the weekend. And we're so used to things being 24-7 in crypto. In the stock market, there's something called a weekend, <laughs> right, where the trading's not happening. And, um, and so that's what happened here. And what interested me here is that you can see these prices converge. So the screen line over here is essentially showing the difference, right? So this is looking at what is the percent difference between the Oracle price and the pool price. And this is what we would trade. This is essentially what we're looking to trade. And you can see, you know, Apple's difference is up here, then it drops down to zero. And you can see that makes sense because the gap between these two prices here is very, very small. Um, and this is not in percentage up here, right? This is percentage down here. This is actual price because, you know, you're in the same ballpark. We don't need to do a percentage because the prices should be there pretty much the same, right? It's both prices, Oracle or pool price are of Apple. Um, but down here, this looks at the percentage difference. So that obviously drops down quite a lot. And so that was quite interesting to me because there, there, there clearly is enough fluctuation here over a longer term time frame um, in prices. So what I've done is, you know, going over to PyCharm over here, which is where I've got a very small Python script. All it's doing, um, for those of you who aren't into programming, it's just reading in this Excel file. And it's printing down here. You can see like a printout happening in the bottom here. It's taking um, the list of what are all the price differences for each asset over that period of time? What is their maximum price difference? What is their minimum price difference? And what is the difference difference? So what is the maximum takeaway, the minimum to show how what was the biggest range that happened by asset? And that's what we're seeing here, right? So for example, ETH moved uh, 6.74. Um, you could look at that as 674 basis points, right? That's how you could read that. Um, and so this is the size of that change, um, you know, uh, between the max and the min. So for example, if we take ETH here, all I'm going to do is change my analysis to show me ETH. And I'm going to hit play. And here's Ethereum. And you can see that here, there's really the prices actually just follow each other pretty much exactly. But then recently, there's this big jump up, right? We've gone from having like a 5% gap to having like a 12% gap. And that, that happened over here and now sitting at around 11 point whatever. 
So that's very interesting. Let's take a look at another one. Um, you know, let's look at uh, Amazon, for example. So AMZN. Um, let's see what that looks like. And here you can see also, you know, fluctuations. So definitely on longer term time frames, like 30 minutes or one hour. In fact, 30 minutes seems to actually be quite a good time interval to look at for this. I don't know what you think. Um, there definitely seems to be some big movement here. Now, I haven't traded it. So I can't sit here and tell you that this is something you should go and put your money in and go and trade. Because actually, as we spoke about in the last video, I think there's a lot of complexity around actually trading it because you have to borrow to short, then you've got to buy back and you've got you know trading costs involved in doing all these trades as well. So you actually have to work out, is that is all of that worth it? But the, the thing I would say here is, I think it should be if the percentage change is big enough. Um, and this is assuming that you get your you get you get that premium back when you then close out that position or when you short that position. Um, what I mean to say is, if I've opened a position and I'm buying on Mirror Protocol, as we saw in the last video, it looks like you're paying that premium when you're then uh, covering that long position or you're closing it or selling. It looks like you get that premium back, but I could be wrong and I'd need to read through the documentation or at least just trade it and be prepared to lose some money to learn that lesson. If anybody here has experience in trading that and making some money, um, <laughs> if you want to be a wizard, shout here in the comments and say, hey, um, you know, it does work. So this is this was very interesting to me. Now, I wanted to give a special thank you to one of the wizards here on um, at Crypto Wizards who actually wrote into me because they saw the video and they would on their own back just gone and done a bunch of analysis and said, hey, you were talking about doing this. I've done it and I've done it on a smaller time frame. And so, you know, I want to keep, um, you know, their details confidential and private because that's, you know, that's important uh, and it's important to them. But this is just a formal thank you to you. You know who you are. Thank you for doing that work, um, you know. And so they're looking at a much smaller uh, time interval, you know, we're talking under five minutes, like one to two minute time interval. And you can see here that you've got the price here, um, which is the pool price, the Oracle price, which is the red line. And then the orange line here is the difference. And, you know, you can see this fluctuation. This one was this image is actually of Apple. Funnily enough, I'd also seen Apple seems to move quite a lot. Apple seems like a good one to do um, if you're doing this. But uh, one of the comments they made is at this time interval, it's not really, it doesn't really seem worth it for arbitrage, which I found quite interesting. And so I wanted to give them credit. Uh, there was more analysis that came with that and also some data. Um, but, I, you know, that's the key takeaway, I think, to, me to mention here for you. So thank you, by the way, for doing that work. Um, so, you know, one of the questions that got asked, if I go back here to where we were earlier, so one of the questions that got asked in the comments, and this was um, by Miguel. So Miguel, uh, thanks very much for the question as well. And by the way, I know because I've seen your name pop up on the course. I've seen your name pop up in lots of places as well. Um, so thanks for raising the question, you know, around Sean, how are you getting the data? So I'm going to tell you that. Uh, first of all, if you go to the Mirror API documentation, go down here to developers and then Mirror API. So sorry, mirror, uh, doc, uh, mirror protocol docs, which is at docs.mirror.finance, go down to mirror API, which is under developers. And when you you'll, you'll see this at the top, you just scroll down, and you'll see that they give you a query here. Uh, now mirror protocol team, if you're watching this, your documentation is awesome. But this this here, it's just it was tricky, like this URL didn't really work for me. I don't know why maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, but I did use this URL that was provided up here for the playground. Uh, and that worked absolutely fine as the URL. And then I structured my query like this, Miguel. So I'm actually going to show you exactly how I did it now. If I go over to Visual Studio Code, here's the, um, here's the query that I wrote. And the, the way I figured out what you could put in here is just by going to Mirror Protocol's playground, that link I just showed. Um, I went there and I typed in things and then there's like, you know, in the playground, it actually recommends things you could type. And I just sort of figured out how that graph is working. And then I took everything I knew I could get. Um, I just took all of those here. So you can see, you know, here are all the different um, sort of uh, features, right? And if I 
compare that to Excel, you can see that that's what those are all the features that made their way into Excel. So that's essentially, you know, the um, the code that I used over here. So it's just, you know, assets. And then under prices, you want to break that between price and Oracle price. The price difference, I just calculated in the algorithm and loaded it into the database. Um, although I'm sure maybe here you could pull it straight. Um, the, the thing here as well is the URL that I used. So here you can see I did, you know, uh, I imported requests in Python and I just put in JSON equals query, query, and up here's my query, right? So I'll just stop that there. Um, you could take a screenshot maybe of that, but that's, you know, that's essentially how I did it. And then I connected to my database here and inserted, you know, um, all of that data in. So that's, that's essentially how it's tracking, tracking the price. Anyway, so that is the update on Mirror Protocol. It definitely does seem to have some arbitrage opportunity, let's put it that way, which I wanted to bring to your attention, uh, which I think is is pretty cool. I mean, if I go back to, in fact, let's look at Bitcoin maybe and see how that looks. Um, I think it's, yeah, here we go. So Bitcoin, you can see there's been a big divergence lately. It was for the last week, it was like nothing. And then it popped up. So, you know, definitely there are um, discrepancies that happen. You know, one of the things that our friend said to us, the, guy, the, the person who did the research, was they mentioned that, um, you know, it, it, crypto seems to react fa faster in terms of price differences than stocks on the short term timeframes, which was interesting. Um, and here on the long term timeframes, prob probably is true as well. Um, but we can see here that, you know, there's been a huge, huge jump. So could this be a potential arbitrage? I don't know. Um, I thought it was insightful. I thought this was really interesting. Uh, let me know your thoughts and feedback in the comments. Until the next one, take care. Talk soon.